we're going to break down over two dozen new features to the 2018 iPad Pros. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. And the 2018 iPad Pros were a complete overhaul. Let's go ahead and take a look at the best changes in the new iPads. Starting off with the Liquid Retina Display. This is still an LCD and not an OLED display, but that liquid connotation is shown off here in the rounded corners of the display. It has a ton of the features that we've come to see, such as ProMotion, True Tone, Night Shift, all of that stuff in a beautiful new display. Still supports the wide P3 color gamut, and when you compare it to the iPhone XR, which also has a liquid retina display, the ones on the iPad look a whole lot better. If you liked the displays before, you're going to love them even more now. Next up on our list is another thing to do with that Liquid Retina display, and that is Tap to Wake, which is coming to the iPad for the first time. This obviously makes a lot of sense, since as you can tell, the home button is gone. All you do, tap the screen, and it wakes up. You can still use the power button in that top right hand corner, but you don't need to. You can just tap on the display to wake it up, automatically unlock with that face ID, and swipe up from the bottom to get into the iPad. One of the most obvious changes, and that encompasses a lot of little things, is the redesigned exterior. It kind of is a merge between the flat back designs of the more recent iPads and to the boxy design of the original. It has squared off edges and a flat back for an overall smaller, compact, and solid feeling design. As a little bit of a comparison, if you haven't seen one of the other iPad Pros, here we have an older iPad Pro. They still have the same shape as far as this smaller size goes, but there's a lot of different changes. No home button, face ID, moved around ports, swapping out ports, a whole bunch of stuff has changed between the two. So overall, the entire exterior has been rethought and reimagined. Looking at the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, there is a huge difference. It is smaller in every way it actually ends up being 25% less volume on the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That makes a huge difference. Not only that, but it is thinner, it is lighter, and it's smaller. So pretty much any way you look at it, the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro is way better than the last. Jumping to the smaller generation, the 11 inch iPad Pro. The 11 inch iPad Pro actually keeps roughly the same size as the 10.5 inch, but has a larger display. It's kind of a win-win. It was already a great size, but now it has a bigger display. It takes more advantage of all that real estate, shrinking down those bezels. To get into your new iPad, Face ID is here to stay. Ditched is that home button and Touch ID. It works pretty much the same as it does over on the iPhone, but it actually works a little bit better because it works in any orientation. So no matter how you rotate your iPad, you can always unlock it with Face ID. On the iPhone, it really only works straight up vertical. It registers the same way, just rotate your face around twice. And because the iPad is kind of a shared device, you can register a second face or alternate ID as Apple puts it. That's kind of the real reason that Apple created alternate ID for multiple people to use one iPad without having to type in the passcode every single time. Because of that true depth camera system that's used for face ID, we get a bunch of other features, including portrait selfies. Now, whenever you turn on that camera, switch it to that front-facing shooter, you have an option to shoot in portrait mode. It'll go ahead and blur out the background, adding a nice bokeh. You can apply five different smart portrait lighting effects, the same ones that we saw over on the iPhone. Unfortunately, all of this, while great, it only works with that selfie camera because there's not dual sensors on the back and it doesn't have all the smarts that we see with the iPhone XR. Still, there's a lot to love here. If you take a lot of selfies, this is a great option. There's even the depth adjustment feature, so you can change while shooting the photo the amount of background blur and bokeh that you see. All of these new cameras are a lot better than they were before, even if resolutions seem pretty similar. That front-facing camera got redesigned as Face ID and True Depth camera system, whereas the back camera got completely overhauled as well. Pictures look a lot more vibrant, most likely due to deeper pixels like we saw with the iPhone XS and XS Max. Apple didn't give a lot of details in what they changed other than just a redesigned camera, and the megapixel count stays the same, but photos instantly look better than they do from our old iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the second generation. A couple things we do know that Apple changed is Apple's now adding a lot more smarts from the beefed up processors, so you can shoot 4K video at 60 frames a second and there's a new five element lens instead of the old six element lens. 
Unfortunately, on the one downside, optical image stabilization was stripped out. Hopefully, the new digital stabilization will work just as well. Smart HDR is the latest improvement to Apple's high dynamic range photo mode. Smart HDR is enabled automatically when necessary and should be a marked improvement from the previous HDR mode. Apple has mirrored the new image signal processor with the neural engine to better capture tricky photos. First, the camera is constantly shooting a 4 frame buffer so there is effectively zero lag when shooting and the shutter is pressed. It then adds inner frames between those frames at a higher, lower, and longer exposures to capture more details. It then combines certain parts of each photo together into the best possible shot. Inside each iPad is a ridiculous battery. It gets 10 hours of use pretty much all day if you're going to be using it that much. And instead of a 12 watt charger, Apple has now upgraded and included an 18 watt USB-C charger. So this is going to help you charge your iPad a whole lot quicker. What's better, you can just use the one that came with your MacBook if you happen to have one of those lying around. Because the new iPads use USB-C. Lightning is slowly fading away and USB-C should allow a lot more compatibility. It's even easier to connect modern peripherals like USB keyboards, cameras, MIDI devices, displays, and more. Another great feature of that USB-C port is power out. Yes, you can finally use your iPad and the massive battery that is built inside of it to power your other devices. Really almost anything that uses USB-C. And I'm sure you have a couple of them lying around. Notably, both your iPhone and your Apple Watch can be charged while on the go. You may not even need to bring really anything else other than your cables. You just need to make sure you've got the right cables with you. And that includes the Lightning to USB-C cable, which currently only Apple sells, or the USB-C magnetic puck charger for your Apple Watch. Other than that, you don't have to do anything. Just plug it in. So here we plug in our USB-C cable. We could import some photos if we really wanted to, but in this case, we're just charging our iPhone. And the same thing happens with the Apple Watch. We unplug our phone, get rid of that, plug in the Apple Watch, and it immediately starts charging right away. Nothing extra to do. Just plug it in like it's a normal USB-C outlet. Powering the new iPad Pro is the A12X Bionic processor. It's insane. As usual, Apple maxed out the processor on the new iPads. With a 7 nanometer A12X Bionic processor, they are insanely fast, pulling in some crazy good Geekbench scores. On our 12.9 inch model, we garnered over 5,000 and nearly 17,000 on our single and multi-score tests. Graphics are also pretty insane, with the new 7 core GPU offering double the graphics power. The smart connector never really got used as much as we expected it to. It's a great way to connect accessories and not having to worry about powering them up. Well, hopefully it'll get used more on the new version of the iPad Pros thanks to being relocated to the bottom of the iPad rather than here on the side. Should allow a lot more compatibility with other accessories, but we'll have to rely on the other accessory makers to actually make them. Exclusive to the new iPad Pros is the brand new Apple Pencil. It's kind of an amazing overhaul from the original Apple Pencil with an all new singular design instead of using caps and lightning. It charges wirelessly through the side of the iPad, but unfortunately it only works with the new iPad Pros and not on any of the previous models. So that's something exclusive to these guys. A lot of cases really have to clip onto your iPad to hold in place. They may not be the case going further thanks to the new magnetic back. We have here the Smart Keyboard Folio, an upgraded version of Apple's Smart Keyboard that actually covers the back of the iPad now, and it simply holds into place using magnets. There are new magnets embedded on the back of the iPad, and when set into place, the keyboard actually just snaps right on, and it holds really well and won't come off anywhere. It definitely takes a little bit of force to remove the iPad when connected using these magnets. We're excited to see what other manufacturers are going to do to support this kind of functionality going forward. And, as a fun fact, you can even connect your iPad to your refrigerator using those magnets, though you should not do that in case it should ever fall down. Embedded with that A12X Bionic processor is Apple's M12 Motion Coprocessor. This helps deal with a lot of background tasks that will hopefully save you battery life in the long run. Things like the accelerometer, gyroscope, barometer, the Siri voice commands, and more. It's able to retrieve and store all this information even when the iPad's asleep, and any apps that happen to need to use it, such as maps or weather, can easily pull that without having to pull all that data themselves. Another feature attributed to the True Depth camera system is Animoji and Memoji support. You can now use these creative characters here on your iPad for the first time. There's a ton of pre-created characters and animals, all sorts of different fun things that you can use to record messages. 
They measure a smattering of different muscles in your face, including when you blink and when you stick your tongue out. They have realistic physics, so things like ears and whiskers all move around as you move your head. As you talk, their mouth moves, and you can record recordings up to 30 seconds and then send them through messages. Or using Memoji, you can create your own characters, choosing skin colors, hair, accessories, pretty much everything you can think of. There's like millions of options to create your own little characters, create your own little sayings, and send them on your way. What's better is you can use any Animoji or Memoji as a sticker. Simply strike a pose, hold on to the face or the character, and then drag it into your conversation. Bluetooth 5 has been slowly coming to all of Apple's new devices. It started a little bit of over a year ago, and now we're seeing it finally come to the iPad Pro. Bluetooth 5 is the latest incarnation of Bluetooth, has a lot of improvements, including faster transmission, more bandwidth, and farther distance. You do need devices that support Bluetooth 5 to take advantage of it though, so don't think you're just going to be able to take advantage of these new features without having new accessories. The new iPad Pros support simultaneous dual band 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi. This usually means that a device supports connections on both radios at the same time, which Apple could use to connect to a Wi-Fi router with both radios to combine bandwidth. Another possibility is capability to connect to both radios at the same time and switch between them as one signal becomes weak rather than holding onto it at the edge of reception. In other wireless news, we have Gigabit Class LTE. Now, unfortunately, this is just the Wi-Fi version of the new iPads. I opted to skip out on the cellular version this year, so we couldn't actually test this out. But just like on the iPhone XS and XS Max, we saw huge improvements when using that Gigabit Class Wi-Fi. Of course, this depends on your location and your carrier to actually support it. Like Apple does many times with new devices, they've included several exclusive wallpapers on the new iPads. In fact, there are eight new wallpapers that you can only find baked into the new iPad Pros. Heading into settings, wallpapers, you can see all of them available and you've probably seen them already in a lot of Apple's marketing images. They're very bright, artistic, colorful, and really fun. So if you like these new wallpapers, you can try them out if you get the new iPad Pros, or you can probably just find them online. Apple is upping their audio game once again. All of the speakers on the new iPad Pro are significantly improved. There are four speakers, two on the bottom and two on the top. And no matter which way you tilt your iPad Pro, they keep that aligned so you're getting true stereo sound. The new ones sound much better than they did in the past and support wider stereo output. Whether you're listening to music or watching an HDR movie, you're definitely going to notice a difference. Thanks to some internal improvements, Apple is now able to offer one terabyte storage options on the new iPad Pros. Of course, throwing things up into iCloud is handy and using all those cloud services, but sometimes you still need to store things on your iPad and not worry about reception or cellular. And if you take a lot of photos, it could definitely come into play. For the first time, instead of 512 gigabytes, the new maximum for the iPad Pros is one terabyte. Going along with that one terabyte storage is upgraded RAM. All the capacities still use the same four gigs of RAM unless you pick up the one terabyte versions in either size. If you do, you'll get six gigs of RAM. Looking at audio once more, the microphones got a huge boost over the last generation iPad Pros. Instead of dual microphones, there are now five. You'll find one located on the side, two, or three rather, looking at the top of the iPad. Two were just those individual pinholes and the third one is kind of hidden. And then a fifth one right there in front by the camera. Whether you're just making memos or you're recording some great video, these new microphones are really gonna help. Apple sometimes uses iPad as a test bed for cutting edge wireless protocols, including the proprietary Apple SIM. This was included in the iPad Air 2 before the technology was embedded in the first generation iPad Pro. For 2018, Apple is moving its embedded solution to eSIM for wider carrier support, though Apple SIM is still supported as a physical card. Last year, iPhone gained support for QZSS and Galileo satellite systems. This year, iPad is including support too for both Galileo, Europe's global satellite navigation system, and QZSS, Japan's regional quasi-zenith satellite system. Once more, thanks to that new A12X Bionic and USB-C, we have 4K monitor support. Your iPad can now connect to 4K monitors over USB-C and gets charged at the same time. Either using an adapter or USB-C cable, you can use an external monitor to enhance your workflow. Certain apps can even display different content on an external monitor, such as iMovie, which allows us to actually preview our creation while we're editing. We can see this becoming even more useful as developers start to think of other innovative solutions 
for this monitor output. No matter how you look at it, whether you're looking at the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro or the 11 inch iPad Pro, this is the biggest update ever to an iPad. If you want to pick one up for yourself, you can find the best prices below in our price guide and let us know your favorite feature down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.